So Brett, your market, Big 12 Media Day, did turn some heads by dropping the phrase. He said the Big 12 had solidified ourselves as one of the top three conferences in America. Now, I was not surprised at all to hear him say that. That's what Brett Yormark does. The guy's a master marketer. Of course, he's going to come out and say that. Well, he's got all eyes on his league as the first to uh, to take the podium at a media day this summer. Then Jim Phillips at ACC media days, fairly predictably, after not only that, but a whole week long of, hey, Florida State and Clemson might actually legitimately be headed to the Big 12. The people pushing things that way. Jim Phillips came back and said, quote, we are not chasing third by any metric of significance. College football playoff appearances, national championships, having our own network, revenue generation, academic prowess. I'm comfortable where the ACC is inside the top three. Well, Brett Yormark definitely drew a rise out of him. If that was the idea, it appears he has the ACC back on its heels a bit and playing defense uh, in this narrative battle. But to be honest, if we're doing this debate, OK, this this is obviously why we're here now to do this debate. What is the third best league out there? Is it the Big 12? Is it the ACC? Lots of you have opinions on Twitter. If we're doing this discussion, you can't really argue too much with what Jim Phillips said there in all of those categories that he just laid out. I'm a Jim Phillips hater, but I'm sitting here saying he's generally right in all of those metrics of significance that he talks about. I even saw uh, Joe Ovi's. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but an ACC centric host, he's got a big following. Uh, he framed it like this. The big 12 claimed they're a top three conference based on vibes. Uh, that's 100% correct. I mean, I think that's, that's in essence, the big 12 argument. That's the Brett Yormark argument. That would be my argument. I got to hand it to him. Like that is such an appropriate way to sum it all up. The big 12's argument is we're the third best conference based on vibes. And I embrace that, and I think it's correct. I think the Big 12 is the third-best conference right now because of vibes. And I know some people will just hate that. And like, ACC country will hate that. Pac-12 country hated it last year when the Big 12 was saying, we're a better conference than you because of vibes. We are the better pick long-term because of vibes. That's, in a nutshell, what we said all of last year. Now, the vibes were dude, doesn't feel like this TV deal is coming through for you guys, the Pac-12. Like the vibes certainly seem to be leaning toward you're going to implode and the Big 12 is going to wind up better for it. We're back in the same spot this year. Again, back to the Jim Phillips part. If we're having this conversation about tail of the tape right now, Florida State and Clemson get to count in the ACC. They're still there, even though they're fighting their way out actively. They're still in the ACC. Texas and Oklahoma are gone. They're not in the Big 12. I mean, absolutely the ACC is winning. The ACC paid out $44.8 million per school. The Big 12 paid out 44.2, so it's not a huge difference. It's slight edge to the ACC and the revenue. Now, Florida State has already argued in court that the Big 12, with its new TV deal that starts in 2025, will then leapfrog the ACC. So there is that, but for right now, Jim Phillips would be correct in saying that. Uh, the ACC has six teams total that have won at least one national championship in football in the AP poll era. The Big 12 has three. Shout out to Colorado, BYU, and TCU. The ACC has three national championships in the last 15 years. Big 12 has zero. Again, I would point out, that's all Florida State and Clemson driven. And outside of that, the Big 12 has more playoff appearances and uh, national championship appearances with what TCU did if we're taking the rest of the ACC. But I digress. I'll give it to you, Jimmy. Jim Phillips gets that one, man. Three national titles in the last 15 years for the ACC, zero for the Big 12. And then, you know, I mean, I don't even really care about the Olympic sports stuff and the academics, but look, it's the same stuff we heard from the Pac-12 last year, and they are correct. A lot of that riding on Cal and Stanford, by the way. They were pulling weight in the Olympic sports category last year for the Pac-12. Now they're doing it in the ACC. We heard all about that, but it, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I think that's all been proven. The conversations we're having now, that stuff doesn't matter, but fine. I'll grant it to him. He used that as evidence. He's correct. They're better in that. But hey, Here's a newsflash for the ACC, okay? The Titanic, you've heard of it, 1912. Um, Kate Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio, all that. The Titanic uh, dominated every statistical category when it came to ships back in 1912. When it came to, you know, you want to go take a cruise, you want to be on one of these big ships that are attacking the seas, it dominated every statistical category. Size, passengers, 
uh, the touches inside, how fancy everything was, all that stuff. Money spent, dominated every statistical category about it. But you know what? It didn't mean anything when it was at the bottom of the sea. Didn't mean anything when the Titanic was at the bottom of the sea. And that's why I would tell you, yeah, vibes matter. Make it a hashtag. Vibes matter. The Big 12 is the better conference right now based on vibes because vibes matter. Like the Pac-12 had more history, way better academics, way better Olympic sports, better a better league in football last year easily than what the Big 12 was. And the Pac-12 screamed about it. John Canzano screamed about it as loud as he could until he hit the bottom of the ocean with a thud and the Pac-12 was gone. That's the reality, man. Vibes favored the Big 12 throughout that whole saga last year. What we were hearing from Jason Shear about Arizona and Colorado, what we were hearing from John O'Rand and Andrew Marshand about the TV deal and the negotiations for the Pac-12. Everything we heard was just screaming. Hey, the vibes are in favor of the Big 12 on this one. And now we have a similar situation playing out in the ACC. Instead of hey, is the Big 12 going to pick up the four corner schools because the TV deal fails for the Pac-12? It's, will the Big 12 pick up the second tier of ACC schools or maybe even the top tier of ACC schools because of the Florida State and Clemson lawsuit? And people with legitimacy behind them are now talking about this being possible to the Big 12. It started with Ross Dellinger. Then we had Josh Pate come out and say, hey, actually, yeah, like this is kind of what I meant the whole time. I felt like there was a legitimate possibility Florida State and Clemson wind up in the Big 12. And Brent McMurphy has given a little bit of air to that being a possibility as well. So, like, people are starting to come around. The vibes are getting higher for that being a possibility. But that's not even what needs to happen here. If they're just gone wherever they're gone, the ACC is in huge trouble. Because if you take away Florida State and Clemson, then you start comparing accomplishments. Okay, well, the Big 12 is up 2-0 on playoff appearances, 1-0 on playoff wins. Uh, more schools that have finished in the top 25 the last five years, significantly more. We've got more depth in terms of a football conference for the Big 12. Fan bases that care more about football in the Big 12. Better basketball league with KU, Baylor, Houston, Arizona, etc. And you'll have momentum. Instead of being a conference that just got teams taken away, the Big 12 knows exactly what that feels like. The Big 12 knows exactly what that looks like and what your national perception is. It, when that happens, it's not good. You get made fun of. People don't believe that you're a legitimate league anymore. That would not be something that's very survivable for the ACC in this conversation of who is the third best conference. And oh, by the way, if Florida State and Clemson leave, what's happening with North Carolina, guys? Like, we know that's the real prize here. There's a debate about whether Florida State or Clemson make it to the Big Ten or the SEC. There's not much of one about North Carolina. If they want to go, they'll be in one of those two leagues. They'll be, it'll be a fight to get to North Carolina. And that is like, again, in terms of people with legitimacy reporting, Chris Lowe, he just signed an extension at ESPN. Congratulations, Chris, based on that. Uh, Chris Lowe just reported that for ESPN, that North Carolina is the real prize here. Uh, Maybe report is the wrong word, but he he gave a quote in a story on ESPN.com about that, that North Carolina is the real prize here. And even if you're just looking at the actions, the North Carolina Board of Governors, has been angling to either try and keep NC State with North Carolina or just be able to stop North Carolina because they know where this is going. Again, the vibes, the vibes, the vibes, the vibes. The North Carolina Board of Governors knows where this is going. So to me, this has never really been about what does the tail of the tape that you would throw up there at the beginning of the boxing match actually say about who has the advantages. There's one category that really does matter, and it's the one that was kind of mocked in the way that that was set up by the ACC early on here, that the Big 12 thinks the vibes mean that they are the third best conference. And I am here to tell you, yes, I think the vibes mean that the Big 12 is the third best conference right now. Perhaps perhaps a little bit of bravado mixed in with the vibes, but bravado and vibes are what make the Big 12 the third best conference right now. By the way, cherry on top of all of this, who are the commissioners leading everything right now? It's Brett Yormark. It's Jim Phillips. One of them is dynamic, an innovator, a disruptor in his words. Like that, you just heard from the chief marketing officer of the Big 12 on this channel not long ago, Tyrell Kirkham. Shout out to him. 
did a great interview, and he said, we want to be disruptors. The Big 12 is a disruptor. That's that's what the league is. Meanwhile, Jim Phillips tried to stand in the way. He tried to be a disruptor with the college football playoff. All he did was cost his league millions of dollars because Greg Sankey now isn't feeling so generous. He tried to join the alliance only to just get clowned, and that thing blows up. Jim Phillips is a lifelong college athletics guy. It's not the wave right now, man. Those aren't the vibes these days. If you want to be successful in this college athletics environment, it doesn't take the Bob Bowlesby kind of figure anymore. It takes the Brett Yormark. I'll take Brett Yormark 25 times out of 10 over Jim Phillips if you're comparing these two and who's going to win this round of the way things go. So, yes, if anyone's wondering about the vibes, the kids say this. The vibes favor the Big 12 big time here, and that is what truly matters. It's not everything else on this sheet of paper. So I'm sorry, ACC country, but I do think that Brett Yormark and the Big 12 are correct in saying that. Okay, let's get to uh, the rest of the Super Chats here. 